Okay. Let's do this. Good morning. It's about 5.45. It's still mostly dark. I slept pretty well <laughs> after I fixed my Thermarest. My air mattress got a couple punctures last night. You see in the desert, you really want to check the ground before you lay down your air mattress because there's lots of pokey things in the desert. And I had two holes. And within about 20 minutes, it's... And... Ah... Uh, I had to wake up and find the hole, which was hard, and then patched it. And I'm all good now. <laughs> mm -hmm -hmm. Buen provecho, amigos. Food always tastes better when you're outside. So I haven't used this type of rear system before, but it's pretty cool. I have all my sleeping stuff in there, so like my sleeping pad, and my sleeping bag and on this side I have all my clothes warm clothes puffy jacket long pants all that stuff and it's pretty impressive how it jams into those two bags and then right here that's where my tent goes I'm liking it so far you know I kind of change up my setup for every ride but it seems to be working for this one this is a great place to sleep. Thank you, soft piece of sandy ground. Even though you popped my air mattress, it's all good. I love you. Hey, buddy. You looking for leftover beans? I hate to break it to you. There aren't any. Nice little head bob there. All righty. Let's go. Ah, the sun is up. The sky is blue. Looks like it should be a nice day. Thank you, Hot Springs Camp. Even though, for me, there was no hot springs. But I did just read that if I was here on a Friday or Saturday, that they're open till 9 p.m. So next time, I'm, I'm coming on a Friday or Saturday. <laughs> All right, my friends, let's have another beautiful day on planet Earth. No flatties, no crashies, no whammies. <laughs> I would like everybody to know out there that today is November 17th. Happy Thursday, but also happy birthday to my little brother, Ethan. He's 39, that's crazy. <laughs> He's catching up to me. Ah. Hope you have a great day, Ethan. Love you, man. I'll be thinking about you out here in the desert, sending you some love. And today I'm gonna be heading through a wash called Canyon Sin Nombre, which means the canyon without a name. And uh, that should be a good adventure. And then I'll head up towards Borrego Springs. Well, all right, here's my turn off. I've had about 10 or so easy highway miles, and I'm taking a turn into the dirt, a sandy wash, Canyon Sin Nombre. And this is about 20 miles, and depending on the conditions of it, it can be very slow and sandy. If there's been rain, it might have packed it down. I have no idea what the conditions are, but uh, time for some adventure. Here we go. And I've seen like three cars all of today. It is definitely desert solitaire out here. Okay, bike, let's do this. <laughs> it's definitely sandy, there's no doubt about that. 
Woo -wee. Reminds me of the white rim. This little sand surfing. Oh God. At least it's downhill right here. Oh yeah, it's definitely deep. I have 2.4 inch tires, which is a little wider than the average, which should help. But yeah, this could, this could be the longest 20 miles of my life. We'll see. Oh God. Whew. So I'm gonna let some air out of my tires, which should help with traction a bit. Okay, here we go. Happy Thursday. <sighs> Looks like I'm not the only one that's tried to bike through here recently. There's a couple tires right here, tire marks. If I can stay to the side, it's a little harder. The sand is all out there where the cars go and rip it up. Very reminiscent of the Baja Divide. Oh, we're getting deep right here for sure. Okay, okay. Whew. Oh. oh boy, this is gonna take forever. Come on. Come on, buddy. I can only hope that the conditions will get better. <laughs> or maybe they'll get worse. I have no idea. You know, this reminds me of the very first time I did the Baja Divide in 2017. That was my first ever bike packing trip. Up until that point, all of my big adventures had been on pavement. And then I hit the Baja Divide and hit the sandy stuff and I was like, oh my God, this is so slow. This is excruciating. <laughs> and it really took a while of riding the Baja to realize that, you know what? When this kind of stuff happens, you just embrace it and you just, you just go slower. You know, most of my trips, I'm used to just hammering and going fast, but sometimes you just can't and fighting it does not make it better. So this is one of those moments where I'm just gonna be going slow and that's okay. Cause this is where I am and I have this whole place to myself. <laughs> this is seriously the most brutal bike route I have ever done or heard of in my life. I'm being aided by the fact that this is all downhill. So momentum is taking me through. Once I have to go flat or uphill, that's gonna be a lot more difficult. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, this is like my own private canyon. I'd be surprised if I see anybody today. We'll see. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy.
So as I'm riding out here, I'm thinking about my brother. It's his birthday after all. And I'm reminiscing about an adventure we had in 2010. He rode his bike with me from Vancouver to San Francisco. And it was such a great brotherly bonding experience. You know, he's five years younger than me. And we didn't grow up really hanging out together all that much because of the age difference. But that adventure was one of the first times we really bonded deeply. And as I'm riding here looking around, I wish he was here, you know, to experience this. And back then when we did that ride, we thought we would do that kind of stuff all the time. But, you know, life happens and he got busy and has a family and kids and it's hard for him to take off. But uh, yeah, I don't know <laughs> what the point of this story is, but sometimes you don't realize how special an experience is until much later. You know, of course we enjoyed it in the moment, but looking back on it, that was really profound. And I'm so grateful that we got to ride down the West Coast together. It was so beautiful. So Ethan, I know you're back in snowy Boulder right now. Just want to let you know that I'm thinking about you and I love you. And someday we'll go on another adventure. But right now your adventure is uh, being a daddy, <laughs> which is probably way harder than riding through sand, no doubt. Man, I've been called a tree hugger before, but I just can't help it when you see this. Look at it, you just have to touch it and hug it. And just to show you how big this thing is, Ethan is 6'3", that tree is just a little bit taller. Man, that's huge. So when I first started this little trail right here, I thought there'd only be essentially one way to go. But there's tons of little offshoots all over the place that go off into different canyons. And since I don't have my Wahoo on my handlebar right now, I don't have turn for turn directions at every moment. And I've already gone the wrong way twice because I start riding, start riding, I pull out my phone, look at the GPS, oh wait, <laughs> this isn't right and I turn around so I'm gonna have to be hyper vigilant out here because it's a maze, amazing. I feel like I'm on a Star Wars planet out here. Like a star. 
So as beautiful as this little canyon is, the riding is definitely harder than way out in the, the wide open areas. It's sandier and there isn't a whole lot of room off to the side to retreat to to find the harder ground. Right now I found a good spot, but in general, I'm slipping around like crazy in here. But, you know, it gives me more time to enjoy the surroundings. I mean, look where I am. This is crazy. And it's amazing to think that yesterday, less than 24 hours ago, I was riding in the Alpine mountains above San Diego. This couldn't be more different. Oh, here we go. There's some sand for you. <laughs> oh, okay. been at it for about three hours now and uh, when I'm not filming I'm just charging my head is down <laughs> and my mind is is so laser focused it's like left right zigzag stay out of the deep sand go over here put your foot down you know walk a little bit drag your bike through some sand <laughs> it's a workout it's a full body workout my core is getting some practice today but uh, we're making it, I think I'm about halfway through this, so maybe 10 or so miles left. Whew. Onward. Look what I found here. My least favorite thing, one of my least favorite things in the world, single use plastic water bottles. And why would you just toss it here? It ain't going nowhere. I'll pack it up, take it out. Do, do my little good deed for the day. But these things are so stupid and horrible for the environment. So I was riding by and I saw this super silver shimmery thing on the side of the, the road here and I thought it was a hubcap, but nope, look at it. We've got ourselves a graduation balloon. It says, al fin lo logré. <laughs> Finally, he did it. I wonder where that balloon came from. I mean, these things can fly very, very far, hundreds of miles, you know? And that's another thing, besides those single use plastic water bottles, these types of balloons, as fun as they are, I get it, I had them as a kid, horrible for the environment. You know, you let them go into the sky, they fly away, and then some animal eats it, and that's no good. Going into an Ocotillo forest. These plants are beautiful. I love them. This is the sandy sand. Oh man. Whoo. Check this out. Open expanse. Man, that's stunning. This little 20 mile stretch has quite a bit of diversity. This 
So there's a reason why I'm doing this in the winter and why everybody does it in the fall or winter. There's nothing out here. And in the summertime, forget about it. It would be insanely hot. Like even right now, I don't even think it's 70 degrees and it feels pretty warm. You would not want to get stuck out here in the summertime without water. That would be, oof, I don't even know. That would be dire. <laughs> and now we're gonna go down this steep, steep, choppy road. <laughs> I mean, another little canyon. <laughs> it's amazing how many roads are out here. Four wheelers definitely get after it. I think there's a lot more of those than bike packers. <laughs> I was riding by, saw this little mini cave, thought it'd be a cozy place to eat an energy bar. And if I ever was in an emergency situation, I would totally camp right here. There is plenty of room to camp right there and you'd have cover from the elements. Huh. This road isn't letting me out of here without a fight. <laughs> It's been real sandy for the last bit. That's why I haven't really been filming. I've been focusing. A lot of this right here. A lot of pushing through the deep stuff. But we're, we're going forward. And that's the direction we want to go. Oh, come on, you can do it. Ah. Whew. Come on, buddy. How you doing, Shadow? Keep charging, bud. Keep charging. <laughs> Look at that, it's pavement. <laughs> I'm psyched to be here. Woo Check it out. Easy pedaling, pavement. It's not the most beautiful pavement, but it's a lot faster than six inches of sand. So I started that trail at eight in the morning. It's 1.45. It took almost six hours to do 20 miles. <laughs> Again. I can run faster than that. <laughs> you can't really compare them because obviously with running, I'm not carrying stuff, but you get the idea. It's slow, slow travel, but it's beautiful. I really enjoyed that. And now I'm gonna head toward Borrego Springs. See how far I get today. It's 2 p.m. Sun goes down in about two and a half hours. So I'm riding down the road and I look off to my left and I see a whole bunch of weird stuff. And uh, you know what, desert, pe desert people have some of the weirdest art and I love it, check it out. I really love the graveyard of old weed whackers. <laughs> That's a nice touch, I love it. I really do love it. The creativity it takes to put some of this stuff together and to think, you know what? That's what I want my front yard to look like, a bunch of old weed whackers.
All right, I'm about 15 miles from Borrego Springs. Once again, I'm racing sunset. <laughs> it's gonna be a close one. It sure does get dark early here. And this area really holds special meaning because I think it was this road in 2009 that I pedaled on when I rode the cruiser bike across the country. I stayed in Borrego Springs, camped behind a fire station, and I rode a road just like this, heading east across the country. Good memories. You hear how quiet it is? All you can hear is my little twirly thing spinning. Oh, the sculptures, I remember those. Oh yeah. This is pretty neat. Right off the side of the road here are some big sculptures and I remember riding by these in 2009 as well and uh, I don't know somebody thought it'd be a good idea to put giant animals out here and I do too I love art I love all art I love funky art I love modern art I especially love desert art and it's cool it adds a little life to the area you know makes me happy kind of reminds me of Burning Man and the creativity that goes into just creating something that people love to, to share with other humans, humans they'll never meet, just to put a smile on their faces or make them think about something differently. Okay, so I'm about five miles outside of Borrego Springs and I rode by this American Legion and I saw some RVs set up and I thought, you know what, maybe I'll stop and ask them if I can camp here because the last two nights I've been getting in at dark and I would like to have a little bit more time to chill. So I. Stop by, $5 camping, they've got water and food and all sorts of good stuff. So I'm in here at the American Legion drinking my alcohol-free old Milwaukee with my new friend. What's up, buddy? Hey, pal. How you doing? I'm doing great. We got some friends over here having a great time. We're watching Thursday Night Football, making friends. This is a really welcoming place. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. And uh, you're a great guy, too. Really, really nice meeting you. Yeah, it's so good to meet you guys, man. You know, sometimes I like camping in the middle of nowhere. But yeah. then you don't get to meet people, you know? Yeah. This is more fun. Vietnam, Light Infantry Battalion, Vietnam, 1968-1969. Cheers! <laughs> it's cozy time. I'm so glad that I stopped at this American Legion. I just had a good feeling about it when I rode my bike past it. and All the guys here were so welcoming, and they made me food, and, you know, they all were asking me a million questions about traveling by bike and some guys gave me a whole bag of cookies to eat and it was just fun. They, they have quite a community here and I don't really know a whole lot about American Legions. You know, they asked me if I was in the service. I said, no, my grandpa was. He was a colonel in the army in Vietnam. I was in the Peace Corps. Does that count? <laughs> they all chuckled, thought that was funny. Oh, and it's amazing how quickly you can forget about the difficulties of a day when you have, you know, interactions like this with some good humans. Buenas noches from the American Legion outside of Borrego Springs. 